my name is Natasha and welcome back to my booktube channel. Today I'm going to be doing my April wrap up and I read 11 books this month which I'm very proud of. I read 12 books last month which I'm also very proud of and I hope my reading luck continues. As always I hope you're doing good. I hope you had a great month. Now this April I was participating in the Owls Readathon and I almost did it. Like. I chose Auror, I had 12 subjects, I completed 11. I almost got there, but I'm still super proud of myself because it was a hard month for me school-wise, so I'm happy with it, I'm good. First book I read this month is for the subject of potions and I had to read a book that was less than 150 pages. Now I did cheat a little, this book is 200 pages, but I just don't own anything closer so i just had to work with this and that book is ferris by marissa minor this is the prequel to the lunar chronicles and it follows queen lavana it's her kind of villain story and i gave this book 3.5 out of five stars because even though like it was a good story like it really made me understand like how she became like this and why she became like this i still felt like it was a bit too short like i could have if I had more of this, I would have been even happier. <laughs> but yeah, this is actually a villain story that I would recommend reading because it adds a lot. And it's also like beautiful. Like look at this cover. I love it so much. And also the end pages are amazing. Like look, sorry. Look at this. It's so cute. Like that's Luna. It's uh, the city on the moon. And those domes let them breathe air and I just love them so much it's the same thing on the other side it's so beautiful so cute I do understand why some people would think that this is a book is a ripoff just to like get more money out of the series because it's like a 200 page book for $20 but still I really recommend it I really liked it by the way, I buddy read this with my friend on Instagram, Bookish Faye, love you. The second book I read this month is for Ancient Runes, and I had to read a book with a heart on the cover. I cheated on this, I said so in my TBR video. I chose Calendar Girl 1, uh, January, February, March by Audrey Carlin, but there's no heart here, I know that. But in my other edition of this book, which is this one, there's a teeny tiny heart right there I know I'm cheating again but that's the way it's gonna go like I wish I could have read Heartstopper by Alice Oseman but I didn't have it at the time I still don't have it so I had to work with what I got but anyways this book is about a girl whose father goes into debt because he's has a gambling problem and uh, the mm, gangsters beat him up and he's in hospital and she basically has to pay off his debt and for that she goes to work as an escort she can have sex with him if she wants if not not it's not an obligatory thing she's not a prostitute she's an escort and she basically like every month she goes to a different client and has adventures with them and i also really like this like i was expecting it to be a lot cornier and a lot cringier a lot worse but it was actually quite okay and i gave it four stars and i really recommend it if you're looking for a fast and fun contemporary read with a little bit of smut the third book i read this month was for the subject of arithmancy and for that i had to read a book out of my comfort zone and or out of my favorite genre and that can easily be classics because it's not that out of my comfort zone, but I don't read many of them for whatever reason. Like, they just don't come up in my life as much as they should. So I read The Catcher in the Rye by J.D. Salinger, and this was actually a reread for me. I read it like two years ago for a school exam, like we had to read it, and I was actually quite surprised by it. I did like it more the first time than now to be completely honest I think I gave it three or four stars I can't remember right now and I'm just I feel like this book was great for the uh, time period in history that it was made for or about but right now I just feel like a lot of the things that this book wants to show us are not that relevant anymore or could be done in a different way I know I'm not explaining myself correctly, but yeah. And if you didn't know, this book is about a boy named Holden who gets kicked out of school and he goes kind of on a 
mental coming of age journey within himself and he discovers things of the world I'm sorry I'm explaining this terribly but again I did like this but not as much as the first time but it, it's like the, the only thing that I can say is like top-notch about this is that it's a easy to read classic which isn't very common but yeah if you're looking for a classic to actually start with I really recommend this the fourth book I read this month is El Chico de las Estrellas by Chris Puello, who is a Spanish author that's very well known. He is LGBTQ+, its own voices. I read this book for astronomy and I had to read most of this book at night, which was easy because it's short. And this is actually like one of my two books that are actually signed by him. I went to see him, like, there you go. It's in Spanish, but it's for me. Um, I actually went to see him and bought the book the same day of the signing and so I know sorry I'm terrible I actually read this from my friend like she, she let me borrow her book and I fell in love with it and then bought a copy of the signing and had him sign it it was weird but I loved it it was amazing I really recommend this if you're looking for a Spanish LGBTQ plus read I wish it were translated to English but it is not if not I would just tell you all to read it and you can see I love this because of how many post-its it has from over the years of how many times I've reread it. And this time I actually gave it 4 stars instead of 5 because I feel like I've grown a bit in my taste as well. So I don't feel like it's this amazing thing. Like it's not 5 stars amazing, but it's still really good. So the fifth book I read this month is Magic Study by Maria B. Schneider, again with my friend on Instagram at Bookish Faye. And I had to read this book for Herbology and I had to read a book with an M, like the title starts with an M. So as you can see it does. And again, this is the second book in the Yelena Zoltana series by Maria B. Schneider. I love this series, five to five stars to this book. I can't really tell you what the second book is about, but Poison Study is about a girl who's gonna get executed and she gets the choice to either be executed or be the king's poison tester, which is basically the same thing because if the commander gets poisoned, she gets poisoned. So basically she's like, well. But it's a very nice, uh, it's a very fun and quick and fast paced fantasy. Like I fly through these, I love these so much and I can't wait to read all about my babies, Balak and Ari and Janko and everybody. The sixth book I read this month is History of Magic and for this I had to read a book with a witch or wizard. And apart from Harry Potter, I do not have many of those, but I did read the Iron Trial by Holly Black and Cassandra Clare and this book is about a boy whose uh, mother got killed because of magic so his father has raised him to believe magic is bad like all magic is terrible is bad but there's an obligatory like entrance test to the magic school when you're 12 I believe and he has to go to that and he goes with the mindset of doing the worst he absolutely can but he still gets admitted into it and his father's like darn but yeah, I love this book so much. I heard a lot of people say that it's literally a copy and paste of Harry Potter and it's honestly not. Like the only similarity is that it's a magic school. Like both of them are magic schools, but apart from that, it's nothing I, li I like. I loved it so much. And I also can't wait to read the Copper Gauntlet. Like it was amazing. I gave it four stars and I'm really hoping to give the next books five stars. Cause like, I feel iffy about giving first books five stars because you don't know whether it could go downhill and you might be disappointed but yeah I really recommend this I love it it's metal grade but kind of like higher metal grade like it's young adult basically seventh book I read this month is for charms and I had to read a book with a white cover and I chose going home by Harriet Evans and this is a contemporary about a girl whose family kind of like they have a house in the country and like the kids are all in London with their jobs and their lives and everything that house is literally their life like it's everything for them and one day they have to sell it and nobody understands why and it's kind of this big whole challenge of like saving the house and there's also like friendship love and everything and I guess three stars because it like Firstly, the reason I even bought this book is because there's a blurb by Sophie Kinsella on the cover and she's my contemporary queen. I love her. But like, look at 
this is a thick book for a contemporary like it is thick it is fat and I honestly feel like a lot of this could have been condensed and apart from that like the things that happen like I feel like the protagonist was very whiny and kind of very childish like if you gotta sell the house you sell the house like if your parents say we need to sell the house just listen to him like it's not this big ass tragedy like chill chill but apart from that I did really like it the eighth book I read is for transfiguration I had to read a book with shapeshifters now they're not exactly shapeshifters in this book but they're close enough and it is fire study by Rini Schneider again third book in the Elena Sultana Chronicles read this with bookish Fay. Loved it, five and five stars. It was the, technically the end of the trilogy, but then the author extended it for three books more, which I still have to read and I'm so excited to. And again, this it's a third book in the trilogy. I can't say lots about it, but I loved it. It was amazing. You need to read this. Like if you, it's light fantasy. Everybody will like this. And the reason I chose for ship shifting is because they're magicians and they can they can make you think that you're seeing something that you're not. So that's kind of shape shifting. I'll make it count. The ninth book I read is for care of magical creatures, and I had to read a book with a creature with a beak. Now they're not exactly beaks; they're unicorns. I'm sorry. Like I could have sworn that there were creatures with beaks in this book, but. There's all types of creatures that's just not specifically that. Like a dragon, it's not a beak, but I'm making it count. And it is La Resistencia by Laura Gallego Garcia, again, a, Sp a very well-known Spanish fantasy author. I love her books. I actually read this book like five years ago, like so long ago. I loved it and now I'm rereading it. And I honestly didn't understand anything. Like it's been five years, that's a long time for a book. And I was honestly like not as in love with it as I was the first time. Like I feel like the story was kind of all over the place at times and I didn't get that feeling of absolute joy like entranced in this book. So I lowered it to four stars but I am very excited to continue the series. And basically this book is about a boy who gets home and his parents are murdered and basically he finds out there's an alternate world called Idun where there's creatures and there's been a schism and the magicians have ran away from that place to earth and there's a killer that's killing them and it's a big whirlwind and I did really like this I did not expect the plot twist that happened but I also feel that some plot twists weren't necessary they were just there to be like boom and you were like that doesn't really mesh but anyways really recommend it again if you're looking for a fantasy Spanish series the 10th book I read this month is for Defense Against the Dark Arts and for this I had to read a book that's set close to the Sea or Coast and that book is El Principe de la Niebla by Carlos Ruiz Zafón. This is the writer of The Shadow of the Wind and as you can see like clearly there's a ship sunken underwater, a lighthouse and sea so it's set near the sea I can guarantee you like the sea is actually a big part of the story. And I really love this book, Four Stars. A teacher long ago made us read this and I loved it. Like, I did not expect to love it because normally teachers' books, like school books, are not that enjoyable, but this one was. I loved it. This is about a boy whose family moves to the sea, to the coast, during the Spanish Civil War. And basically, there he finds a friend and a mystery, and it's very like mysterious and phantasmagorical. I love the eerie feeling it gives me. And last but not least, the 11th book I read is for Muggle Studies and I had to read Contemporary basically and I chose to read this little, this mini book which is A Secret Seven by Anna Blyton. I love this series as a kid, I still love it now. It was great to revisit it after so many years and honestly I, I, I just, I love anything Anna Blyton writes like the adventure series, the Naughtiest Girls School series, the series, the famous five, I love anything she writes even now. But yeah, if you have kids, make them read this, please. They're gonna love it. It's amazing. Like, it, this, it's about a group of kids who form a secret society and solve mysteries together. And it's so cute and amazing. And oh my gosh, it just makes me feel warm inside, honestly. So yeah, guys, that was my reading month. I hope you did 
tremendously well. I love you all. I hope you're safe. And please comment, like, and subscribe to my channel.